we got to the point where we're going to deploy the application. And to do this, all we need is some server in the internet or some server on the cloud that's gonna have a public IP address so that we can access it from anywhere in the world, which is the whole concept of the internet. And in this example, I'm gonna be using the Amazon Web Services to provide me with some cloud computing power so that I can create a computer in the cloud. And then that computer will have a public IP address and then we'll be able to access the application using that IP address. AWS is very popular they're like the main cloud provider in the world. I think they have like almost 50% of the market share. So that means that almost half of everyone using the cloud, they're using the services that are provided by AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. And again, like I said, you can use any cloud provider that you want, or even if you can set up your own server, then feel free to do that. But you just need to understand that you need to have some server running on the internet with some public IP address so that we can access it on the internet from anywhere in the world. And I already have the console open so I'm already logged into AWS and since this is really open meaning you can use any cloud provider that you want then I'm not gonna you know show you how to create an account on AWS and things like that we're just gonna go ahead and create a server and then have a public IP address and then we can just log into that server run our Docker file and that's gonna be how we're gonna deploy the application now AWS has other services that are built for Docker directly but I'm not gonna go ahead and use those services because they're more expensive and I just don't want to make it too complicated but all those other services that you can work with with docker at the end of the day that's what they're going to do to run the application they're just going to run a container and then you know give you the ip address for the host and do all the configuration for you or maybe you'll have to do some other configuration but you just need to understand that those services they're like wrapper services around docker so at the end of the day to the core under the hood it's docker that's still running a container it's still doing a docker run and then passing some parameters that's all it's doing so all the services that it AWS or other cloud providers provide to work with Docker, they're really wrappers around Docker because at the end of the day, it's still Docker that, uh, you know, they're running on some computer. So in the AWS world, whenever you need to create a computer, you create something called an EC2 instance, and that's what I'm going to do. And I have this here because I've already been to the EC2 instance page. So it shows me everything that I've recently visited, but you can just search it here. So you would do like EC2 and it would come right up here, or you can just click on this and then expand all the services. It should be under compute. As you can see here, we have EC2 instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and uh, I'm gonna create a new instance. So this instance I was using as a web server, I just terminated it. So I'm not gonna be using it. And I wanna show you how to create one as well. So we're gonna click on launch instances and we're gonna stay in the free tier. So I'm gonna pick the first one here and then click select. Now it's gonna ask me what kind of instance that I want. Again, we want to stay in the free tier because I just wanna show you this thing online. I don't want you to be spending money you know spinning up AWS instances that's gonna cost you money so we're just gonna stick with the free tier and then I'm gonna click on next and this is a very important part of this because I want to put in a script for the configuration of the instance and what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to install Docker and also Docker Compose on the computer as we're creating it so instead of you know create the instance and then log into it and then install Docker and everything we're just gonna put in the script in this box and then whenever it's gonna configure this instance whenever it's launched it, it's going to run the script and that's going to install Docker and Docker Compose. And that's really all we have to install so that we can deploy and run the application. So I have this tab open here and this is the same application that we built in this course. And this is the script that I have here. So some of the stuff that I didn't want to like retype, I just put them in this script file. As you can see, I have the HTTP post as well because it's such a long string. I was testing and I didn't want to have to type this whole thing. So I just put it in here. I can just copy and paste it whenever I need to test. So this part here from line one to line eight that's the script that we need to put in this box so i'm gonna go ahead and copy this thing and go back to aws and then just place it in there and all this is doing i'm gonna see if i can expand this a little bit and scroll up all right and i know sometimes when people say script you might be a little bit you know freaked out but this is really simple all it's doing is it's updating the system install docker start the service and then it's gonna add the ec2 user to the docker group that's what we're doing here so user mode add group and then we're passing in the name of the group and then we're passing in the user and then we say that the service should be enabled and then we grab this file from github and then we place it in this location for docker compose and then we change the permission on that file 
and that's what we're doing that's going to install these three lines down here or more like four lines they're going to install docker compose and this right here is going to install docker you can take this script if you're going to be working with docker and aws and this script is really something that i just keep somewhere whenever i need to use it then i just go ahead and copy it and paste it wherever i need to paste it so that's what we need to do this is very important otherwise we will have to do everything manually meaning we'll have to wait for the instance to be ready and then log into it and then do these commands okay so instead of doing that we just pass the commands in and it's just going to do it for us as it launches the instance itself so this is really important and then everything else here can be the default so we're not going to change anything else and then i'm going to go to the storage the storage can be whatever we have as the default so 8 gig is fine because you know we're not really doing anything for real we just want to see this live in action if we were going to deploy this for a real production environment we would probably take a different approach um, but this is just a demo of deployment so it's not a real deployment even though it's a deployment okay so i hope that makes sense and then i'm gonna go to tag and then i'm gonna go to configure security group so i'm not gonna add any tag but feel free to add one if you want and then in this screen um we need to add another rule so here we're gonna edit a tcp rule and we're gonna open port 3000 okay so that's the port that our application is going to be running on. And then we're going to say anyone can send a request to this. So this first part is for IPv4 and then the rest is for IPv6. So we're saying everyone from anywhere using either IPv4 or IPv6 can access this computer or this server on 3000 using the TCP protocol. That's what we're doing here. And then the first one is for just SSH so that we can log in and then transfer files and things like that. So this is going to be open by default because they need to give you a way to access the computer. So that's what we have to do here. So open port 3000 and that's the only port we have to open because that's where our application is going to be running and then review and launch and everything looks good and i'm just going to click on launch so that's going to ask us to select a key pair which is a key that we need to log into the computer so i'm just going to say create new key pair and then i'm just going to give it a name here node api key so that's the key pair that i'm just giving it a name and then i'm going to go ahead and save it on my computer and i'm just going to go ahead and save it here okay so i'm going to click on save and then launch the computer while this is launching so if we click on view instance you can see that it's still provisioning you can see it's spending right here so I'm going to change the name to node API server and you can already see we have the public IP here okay so now it's running that was really fast we can access this computer using SSH and then we can just transfer the file docker should be installed docker compose should be installed and then we're just going to run our command again and then everything should be working so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and then I'm going to go back to workspace one so here uh let's see all right so what I did is I removed the package.json file because I don't want to transfer this file over to the computer because we don't really need it we're going to run everything inside of a container so the node modules is going to be inside of the container so we don't need this file here whenever we're going to transfer all these files over to the remote server so there's one thing that i noticed when i was editing the last video that i made a mistake and did that env file so i'm going to open that file and then here i'm going to change this to uh, equal sign so let's do that and then i'm going to remove this space okay so i'm sure you guys caught that but i didn't realize that until i was uh, editing the last video i'm going to quit here and then what i'm going to do is to go back once and then i'm going to do ls and you see that we have the node key pair here and one thing we need to do is we need to change the permission on this key so we're going to have to do sudo chmode and i think 400 should be good so we're going to do 400 node api key and then press enter I'm going to add my password here and then press enter. So now if we look at this file, node API, you can see the permission is different. You have to change the permission on the file. Otherwise, um, it's going to say, hey, the file is too open. You can't access the uh, instance with it. What we need to do, we need to copy everything that we have. So the entire folder of Node.js API, we need to copy that over to the um, you know, remote server. 